whenever anybody gives me the comparison of my dad, it's always a really meaningful compliment on my end. He wore the number 50. He's the reason I wear 50. Biggest thing I've heard from people that have played with Joe and against him said he was the toughest guy they ever played against. Growing up at the Bronx house, chaos. Hey, moment of truth. A lot of summer days, my brother and I'd have a home run derby in the front yard with a tennis ball and playing horse. Yes! My dad grew up without a dad, and he wanted to be the best dad he could be, to go above and beyond and be what his dad wasn't for him. Joey, probably about third grade, was when he started doing organized sports. Joe coached him. He was probably his biggest fan and biggest critic. I took it all a lot more serious probably in seventh, eighth grade. I hadn't you know, really grown in my body yet. I was so far behind, I couldn't do a push-up. Joe was always trying to improve him. At times when Joey had a workout, even after they'd work with the trainer, they would come home in the driveway and work on it a little bit more until he got it. I started to get strong, continuing to grow, and then my senior year, we won the sectional and the regional. My dad was the first person that I hugged after, and I, mean, I remember right where I was feeling that came with that. All the work that had went into that moment was pretty special. When Joey chose Butler for college, he wanted to be close to home. He wanted us to be able to come to his games. He wanted us to be a part of it. My dad, I know he was proud, but there was also the mindset of, all right, like right, let's keep working. You know, we're nowhere near the finish line. That's kind of where my mindset comes from. You know, it's wild how fast my life changed. When I was a butler, I talked to my dad every day, and I'll never forget the day he left for Vegas. He had a lot of annual trips, <laughs> and that was one of them. He went with a group of guys. That was October 18th, 2016. It was right after Johnny's birthday. It's one of the moments I'll remember for the rest of my life. I was in the basement, um, my mom was upstairs, and I just heard her start crying. And I came up, and she couldn't talk. And I took the phone, and the doctor told me there was a ton of blood in his brain, and they didn't know why, and they were trying to get under control. You know, I remember getting a call from my brother, and hey, you know, something's happening to dad, they don't know what's going on, and we're out on a flight later that afternoon to Vegas. We really didn't get the news that it was confirmed that he had uh, brain cancer until we were in Vegas. We really needed to be a unit of us four to face what we were gonna face. Joe's importance on what he focused on was just obviously trying to get healthier, um, but mostly it was just to tell the boys daily that he loved him every day. After my dad got back from his trip, we had a couple surgeries and all this stuff had been done to save his life. Joey decided to redshirt his freshman year. Johnny was homeschooled that year. Even though he was sick, there are some things that I'll laugh about. Him telling stories that I hadn't heard and me telling some stories that he hadn't heard on my end. and. You know, things that I was, you know, planning on telling him, you know, 30 years from now. I commuted every day from the middle of October to the end of the school year until the day my dad passed away in April. He was in the hospital and he'd been there for like a week and I'd been up the entire night and I went home to sleep for a few hours and I was driving back and my mama told me, and, um, it was hard, you know, I mean, I wasn't, I really wasn't myself. I struggled, struggled a lot. There's really not a manual on how to play college basketball, you know, immediately after your dad dies. I mean, there was a time where I thought maybe I should leave Butler and go play Division II basketball somewhere else. You know, I really didn't know what to do, who to turn to, and it was tough, but what kind of got me through was I, I just, I fell in love with working and I fell in love with the process of I'm gonna be a little bit better today. 
and I'm going to be a little bit better tomorrow, and then I know I'm going to be a whole lot better in a month. As a redshirt sophomore, after the season ended, I knew I was going to graduate early in three years, and I had two years of eligibility left. I made the decision that I was going to leave. It's been about as good a new chapter here as you could really ask for here at Indiana. How about that? A ground meister. The first time Joey came on campus, I can remember his mother and his brother being with him, and then they brought him into the weight room, and I can remember him asking me if we could get a workout in. And that was his first day on campus, and uh, I could just tell he was eager and ready to go. I wanted to be the hardest worker here. I wanted to win over everybody in the program and be a positive energy, be a guy that, you know, leads with enthusiasm. Let's get it, baby. Let's get it. All we got, all we got, fellas. You know, that's something that, that my dad and I talked about that I try to I try to do daily here. I've been blessed to train some of the best professional athletes in the world, but I've not had an athlete work as hard as Joey has worked in the weight room. And I think our team sees that. Explode up. Get up. There you go, good. They see him in the gym getting extra shots up, or they see him in the weight room getting an extra lift in, and they have joined him. Fantasy outside, into Joey Brunton, let's go! I think Joe would be extremely proud of Joey's accomplishments to this point. I do believe that he would still be able to tell him what he didn't do right in a game because he demanded perfection and he got it a lot of times. It'd be special to see him in a seat, no doubt about that, but I know he's here watching every game. I know he's on every road trip. He won't miss a game, I'm positive of that.